Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of The Box Office. We're at Ronnebosch Boys High School and we've got a special guest today. Evan Rose joins us, we'll talk all things Springboks, his experience. Very unlucky to miss out on the upcoming tour, but certainly determined to get back into the mix. Kalk Berger, Jean de Villers will join me. Sit back, relax and enjoy it because The Box Office is now open. Jean, I've got a flight ticket, stop stopping around. How's the skull? How's the John? Evan, can you hear me? Why about Tuesday night all of a sudden? <laughs> can we go? Freddy, stop asking about initiation because the guys never answer it. Yeah, uh, can I go? Yeah. <clears throat> Hello, guys. <laughs> Did you have to read that? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, guys. Intro on set. Welcome, Yovan. Welcome to the box office making your debut. Yet. Yes, massive. John Scala, obviously, the, the, the regulars. Yovan, um, welcome to Ronnebosch. Yeah, yes. Last time I was here, I think we gave him 70. No way. <laughs> I promise you. <laughs> Excuse, that's a great, that's a humble start to the show. Just had welcome to, back. Just had it, to put it there. I thought you'd be a bit intimidated coming in. No. Is it? And no. John with us, with us, Paul, Jim, Jersey, that doesn't intimidate no, I mean, it's the big game next week. Paul, yeah. Jim, Paul, boys. I actually can't believe you don't speaking to a boys. It's, it's not usual 10 days before interschools to actually interact with them. But okay, today yeah, we, we'll make special. We're in Ronob at Ronob. You're on Cape Town, I'm Paul now. Talk, so. talk us through Blue Mondays. John, we'll come to you. Uh, just what happens? It's, it's the biggest schoolboy derby in, in the world. I've what never... happens with Blue Monday? What's the build up like to, to you guys can come in actually. What's the build up like to this week? Well, I've never been to Blue Monday. Usually all the rugby like admin and stuff has kept me out of it. Because it's a big piss up on a Monday evening and usually you train on Tuesday. So um, I've never you been brave it. enough okay. <laughs> to do it. But um, it's all the yeah, all the old boys around Stellenbosch or wherever actually, but they usually have it in Stellenbosch because most of the students are there. And all the male uh, teachers get together um, at a nominated pub, they rent it out, and then it's like, uh, they call it Geersvang. Um, all the dirigente, uh, cheerleaders sing, um, the head coach talks, the prison sport talks, and, um, and it's actually, yeah, as you said, just a, it's a big piss up. So you used to Paul Jim on Saturday. Yeah, Paul Jim on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> we'll John, well, what happens with the Paul Jim side? Well, you, you guys are getting together on Saturday, you said? Um, yes, so. So look, it's a it's a whole build up, eh? I, I think pe people don't, um, and certainly if you're not from South Africa, maybe not even from from Paul, you might not. Yeah, from Paul, you, you not might from not Paul, understand yeah. the magnitude mm. of this schoolboy game. Now, you know, Skalk and I went to this school. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he went to the other one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, the town is split up. Yeah. Right. It, it is it is totally split up. When the third when the third semester starts, mm. it is literally you can start seeing even families just you know moving a little bit further apart, <laughs> dependent on where you sit. You know whether no. you are um, uh, old boy for the one, mm. um, you know, or linked to the other. Um, and, and then, I mean, for a schoolboy game, the, you know, the, you, you get 26, 27,000 people at mm. a schoolboy game. And, and it's played on neutral ground on the, you know, the... Forest uh, the, the city, Forest yeah, yeah. Uh, town field, so there's no, you know, you don't get any advantage. And it is absolutely packed. But do it's they not sell just, tickets for it? Yeah. Of course yeah. they do, yeah. yes. Yeah. So, but, but they don't, but it's not just the, the Saturday. It's like a whole build-up for, for mm. literally 10, 10 days prior to that. And you have people traveling from all over the world to, to be part of their reunion groups. Mm. You know, you have your 10-year, 15-year, 20-year, 25 30, 50, 60 year reunion yeah. groups getting together oh. in that week. So it, it really is, um, the town is just a buzz. You, you play, obviously it all culminates to the rugby yeah. eventually on the Saturday, but it's like, um, ra it's rugby, netball, hockey, um, chess, golf, golf, table tennis. Table, it's literally everything. Just now. ask John how his <laughs> weekly schedule look. I think Monday is starting with your yeah, John, the Prince hockey. of Paul. How do I, yeah. you, must, you must be a business. He is the Prince of Paul. Yeah. Like the Mike Paula is from Battle Gymnasium. Oscar, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, how does we, your week look? No, so so my Sunday kids, it's My kids are Paul Jim Primary, yeah. okay? Um, and, and also, like, so I get, you know, I obviously met Yvan down in Paul and, uh, and I see his parents a lot still. Um, so you become friendly after it, mm. but then for this week, there's always that little bit of tension. My kids are at Paul, Paul Jim Primary and like Monday, girls hockey, Tuesday, boys hockey, Wednesday, netball, Thursday, 
rugby. Mm. Okay, primary school. Then the high school starts so, on Thursday, Thursday as yeah. well. You know, so then it's like all the high school stuff. Mm. But prior to that, the old boys also play. Yeah. So you have guys that... What do the old boys play? The, rugby. Rugby. Rugby game. The last time, most of these... Contact guys, rugby. No, no, Jimmy, yeah, what the last time. Not an English, <laughs> not an English <laughs> year. Every single year, every single year, either Achilles rupture, ACL, yeah, ACL shoulder, shoulder dislocation. Two years ago, so you have guys that last played rugby 20 years when they were at school. Yeah. They, now they play at 35, 40 years old. They're playing a rugby game. Two years ago, they had 17,000 people on the Wednesday night watching an old boys yeah. game. I watched it on, uh, I streamed it from Argentina because yeah. my best mate was playing his five year reunion. Yeah. Well, game. there you go. Yeah. We all know no, nothing good happens. <laughs> no. CJ Stunder picked up his biggest injury in his career playing for Oakdale Old Boys against Lundberg School. And to this day, the guy who smashed him thinks CJ Stunder was not a good rugby player. But Skala, there's a big difference between being a 21-year-old old boy and a 45-year-old old boy. Do, do, do they have it in different ages? Or? Yeah. yeah. No, so okay, the five yeah, years. You have like old boys and then the golden the golden oldies. oldies. So they, they, they have, oh. the, it's like a... I think 30, so, under 35. Uh, where where would we be? We'd, we, we'd be golden oldies. We right? would be watching. We would play. Last year, but, but it's not it's only in the game. Last year, I went to do the jersey handover. My brother was playing for, I don't know, he's 40 or whatever. So golden oldie, oldie probably. And I was sitting there having a few beers. Because, like, I mean, it's part of the warm-up is having beers every day until you get to, you know, build up enough courage yeah. to actually go play a rugby game. And in the captain's run, my boot went down first, pulled a hamstring, out, gone. But I think another four the guys... Run. Yeah, I, I think another... Uh, <laughs> you guys I, have got a captain's, captain's run. run. I think another four guys got injured. So, like, their jerseys all just had to change sizes. But I did the, the jersey handover and uh, had to down a few beers for it. It was such a great atmosphere. But... Nuts to go play that. Look, I actually he, saw Devet Barry playing one of them. I wanted to, I wanted to mention Jeez, how many that people's night. heads did he take off? No, first, first tackle of the game, decapitated someone gone. That was him off, stretched. Who, Devet off or the no. guy he tackled no. off? No, so obviously no. now you, you've got <laughs> Devet Barry playing. So what is the Paul boy? Maurice Hubert. Yeah. They, they just want to target him. Okay, yeah. go ahead. Him. Maurice Hubert also played. Does he, does he then, come apparently, up? then apparently he was just smashing the guys. Yeah. And tackling them. Like he took it quite seriously. Devet. Yeah, Devet, yeah. Devet, yeah. yeah. And then no. they realised, okay, no, he, stay away from he's him. He's a little bit, he's a little, <laughs> his standard is a little bit of. Has Corner run out for Paul Boys? No, no, not, no, not that I can't remember. I think I maybe think back in the day, but guys, and, and no, no brandy is enough to give me a ball post rugby and go. I'm going to take on David Berry. Just a little tip on boys, get it there. <laughs> and he's still in good shape, also. Yeah, like a David, it's but, nice playing against you. Yeah. Beautiful. Don't engage. Yeah. yeah. But also, show me. I think the beauty of it, and I mean, you can ask Ivan now as well. It's. Um, you know, like, because, you know, we, we played rugby, you don't get to go back that much yeah. after school because mm -hmm. you normally play. But I think the, you know, schoolboy rugby in South Africa is really strong. And I think it's because of these traditions that it stays strong, that the schools stay strong mm -hmm. because of the, the, the old boys being willing to come back and, and just add to to the, the brands. And, and, um, and, and I think it's, it's just an excuse for most of the guys to go back and behave like 18-year-olds yeah, exactly, again yeah. and, and just be a kid again. I think there's, a, there's an element of beauty in it, but there's massive risk as well. In, <laughs> I mean, they now have like old boys, the old boys touch rugby game. Okay, yeah. but that's, that's like yeah, on TV, that. on TV where the Oaks yeah. normally play. They have like old boys indoor cricket game. That was last night. They, oh, they yeah. started paddling it. No, no. <laughs> then they have a snooker. <laughs> then they have a snooker <laughs> competition. Like everything. Just anything to compete. Just an excuse to um for the missus to say oh, I have to go out tonight. You know, it's like old yeah. boys. Evan, yeah. your so talk us through your try. The the, the fifty meter. Scored two that day. One, you? one. Only one. Yeah. Only fifty meters. Yeah. Only only fifty. I, don't know, I think fifty eight. No, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 twenty year reunion will be sixty, boy. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be growing, yeah. In, growing yeah. a year every year. Um, uh, it was my only inter scores I ever played because in grade ten I broke my arm and then grade eleven I broke my fibula. The same injury, so says now. Yeah. Exactly the same. Mm -hmm. And so I've never. That was the only time I've ever played inter schools. So I thought to myself, I have to make it count. Yeah. And um, the previous day, because we were hosting that year, um, I walked past uh, Paul Jim, uh, their side of the pavilion, and they were singing, oh yes, we hate you, man. oh yes, we do. I was like, okay. And then when I got the ball, I was like, I remember them singing that. Okay. And then I was like, okay, cool. So now I have to score a try. <laughs> and then the first thing when I, th what I thought about is uh, when I scored the try, I wasn't like proud or anything. 
I was like, now I can have a beer tonight. Because <laughs> my dad said, after the rugby season, I'm a trick, you can go out and have beers. So I was yeah. like, tonight I'm going to have beers then. Nice. Yeah, that was like a, like a try. The first time you had beers? Yeah. Actually, I was good at school. My what mom. was your first time, Skala? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, uh, why be, why Off the 13 that? dob. And the, uh, and the 14 was my entry. <laughs> it wasn't really my fault the first time I was playing uh, cricket for Wellington Cricket Club. Yeah. And uh, there was three Henderson brothers, James, Cuffey and, and Claude. Uh, Claude. And they were all, you know, Wellington. And we played a two-day game. So the, I didn't, they played, didn't play us. They played for Borland that. And then the second week, the Sunday, we played our second part of the two-day game. And I took a couple of wickets and then... Um, yeah, I had to down a few beers. But then I went on tour. This is where I met John. So I stayed at six. We play, went on a tour to Namibia. And luckily I was... Was he a cricketer? Yeah, yeah. Wikikeeper. That's why he's... Oh, that, that's apparently why That's where the mouth comes part. from. Come on. Yeah, Wikikeeper. <laughs> and we were roommates. So we stayed um, stayed up in uh, Vintuk and we went Justin for... Ontong, our Justin Ontong. Justin oh, Ontong. Okay. Actually, Ontong yeah. was our captain. And we went for a little tour through the brewery, Vintuk Brewery. And then, uh, you know, luckily I was quite tall and big at 14 already. And uh, yes sunk myself into six or seven beers there with the 18-year-olds. Loved it. <laughs> <laughs> it never stopped ever since. Yeah. Even the, the pressure of, of that game, I mean, you've spoken about schoolboy rugby and how, what it means to sort of South Africa. Obviously, we're talking about the fun side of it, but the pressure as you only get one chance at that level or at, at, at that... What's the pressure like going into games like that? It was, uh, yeah, especially our year because we had this big build-up to... We turned 150 years old in my home trick year. And we had this big ball up to it, and then we lost World Schools against Argentina's under 19 side, so I think that was quite valid. But then we also lost Gray, we lost Polaris, we even lost against Oakdale at Brook. It wasn't like, close, no. Uh, we don't know, after the 70 the previous year, we didn't go around the bush. <laughs> <laughs> just, just checking, just double checking, yeah. <laughs> and then, um, and like, I, we got I got messages from old boys saying we're gonna get 50 from Pole Gym, because Pole Gym is quite good that year. I think they were also unbeaten. I think they just lost against Gray that year. Who was who was in the Polish team? That, um, that, Duffy Kellerman. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yuri yeah. Linder. Obviously, Yuri Linder. Yuri Matia. Yuri Matia. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Duffy who else? Uh, yeah. Strabino Jacobs, who's in uh, Bulls yeah. now. Good 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 team, yeah. yeah. And um, for a year younger, can't actually remember. I was one friend. Juan is playing in Ireland, but there nothing else I can actually remember. No one else I can remember. And for my year, only still playing is. Um, Emil van Jordan at the Sharks yes. and Kieran Horn. Okay. okay. Yeah. But just two Springboks. Yeah. Just two. Yeah. 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 Only, yeah. Last 2018. <laughs> <laughs> but it is quite a lot of pressure. Yeah. And um, our uh, coach at the time, Shawnee Rasmus, signed a Super Rugby contract to go coach at the Lions. Lions yeah. So people, our old boys and everyone in Paul was saying, no, Sean is really mentally left and he's just trying to get this over and done with and we're going to get out hiding into schools and everything. And uh, I think we played sax, actually. The week before. before, and it wasn't also the greatest game. Um, I think Jonathan Kaplan was the ref as well. And um, we had a camp, and then that whole week was just about, it's just us sticking together, because literally even our old boys don't back us, which yeah. is quite sad uh, that time. And then it's that we, we only Old Jim, old boys would never do that. <laughs> yes, please yeah. continue. <laughs> so the old boys were against you? Okay. No, our old boys weren't happy. Um, it's very cutthroat, like, well, <laughs> Such as South African, like the fan base of South Africa as well, very critical. Yeah. If you do well, they behind you. If you don't do well, people start getting negative yeah. and everything. And then on the day, um, it was I, I didn't I did not feel it, but I, I think I just enjoyed the uh, the the opportunity to play yeah. in such a big game because that's where you want to kind of show what you can do yeah. and everything. And the win is amazing. But I, I suppose. You guys get used to it, I suppose. You, you get from under 14, under 15, the builder playing in the big crowd, the pressure of the game. So by the time you get to matric, or when you get to your final year, your final two years, if you play, if you're good enough to play both years, you, you're used to that sort of pressure. Yeah, so so on that Saturday, um, where you have the big crowd, and even, even for the other games, they have big crowds. Yeah. It's played at the schools, but still big crowds. But on the Saturday, on the... On the um, uh, town fields, so the under 15A... Team players on a 16A. That's uh, on the main field, sorry, Jean. On, yeah. the, on, the, on the main, main field, field yeah. yeah. Neutral yeah. ground. Yeah. And a 15A, on a 16A, the second team, the under 19 second team, and then the first team. Yeah. Okay, so only four games on that field. So it does prepare you a little bit more. Yeah. But also, I think more so, it, pre it prepares you for professional rugby because all the all the pressure that, that, that he was speaking about, you know, yeah. internal and out, uh, uh, external pressure that, that you that you have, you know, and you have to perform on the day. So, I mean, for him to be able to 
to score a try like that on <clears throat> the biggest, his biggest game in his life up until yeah. that stage, mm. uh, you know, it, it, it prepares you for one day playing professional rugby and being in a high pressure environment and then being able to perform. Yeah. Guys, as we move on, we'll talk quickly about SC on the 20. I've just got a clip I want to show you guys. So just have a look here. Okay, now it was working just now. Oh, you added data. No. Should I <laughs> Should I? Have a look quickly. Okay, you've seen it. Quickly, now we'll talk about it now. SC under 20 is the size of South African schoolboys. Are we bigger than everyone else or is it just something from the outside? It's, it's something that's always spoken about is the size of our guys. There's a bunch of 19 year olds here and they look like grown men. Well, my time, France, England were bigger than us. Yeah. Yeah. schools under 19. Yeah. So that's what I like. I saw the I saw the French team and the England team. Yeah, they're also big boys. Like I think it's just a perception. Mm. Not a, like we have big no, boys. Also, like if you play against some of the Polynesian sides, I mean that's also a different, yeah big yeah, yeah. A diff big, big different boys. physical specimen to what we are. Mm. Yeah, you know, I saw the the Fijian under 20 team. I was doing the game last Friday, and I mean the, they are huge. Yeah. But also they 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 consistent, eh? So whether it's the wing or the lock, you All wouldn't know the soul, difference. Yeah. <laughs> From a set point of view, weight point of view, speed point of view. All the same. Yeah, you know, they're all the same. But it's it looks it's, like they're seven side at the yeah, moment. They're yeah. going well as well, yeah. yeah. But but it's also genes I show me. So I mean if yeah. you take a, you know, a white Afrikaans oaks, yeah. it, it seems like the kids grow quicker. Quicker, mm. yeah. earlier than than, yeah. than than maybe whatever. Yeah. So yeah. so I think there's an element of that as well. But I mean, but the the, the schoolboy system is so professional now yeah. in that it it's it's high performance environments from a young age. Yeah. And again, it's debatable whether that is good or not. Okay, yeah. I've got my opinion on that as well. But I think it it has a part to play in eventually why we are successful at the highest level. So you know they 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 on on gym programs for for earlier mm. um, you know and the work ethic yeah. from some of these kids. I don't know if I would have played professional rugby if I was. I was about to say at the age of no, fifty. No chance if I picked that <laughs> fifty <laughs> and they forced me to, to go uh, for gym sessions at yeah. six five o'clock in the morning. I would have checked yeah. out. Is that how it works now? The guys gymming that early. Even I think so. Well, it seems like rugby is an all year game now to me. Yeah. It seems like the, the, no, it is. Yeah, I think you for like if you, if you, a weekend, if, you sort of knew it was rugby. If, yeah. if you are, if, if your dream is to become a pro rugby player and you come out of these school systems, you're way better prepared than me and John was. Yeah. You know? Like we were, like we uh, pretty much just fell into it, you know, and yeah. off we went. You know, we played a lot more rugby, and I think the <coughs> current crop of younger players don't play enough rugby. I remember my first year, if I had an option to go train or play a game, I would play twice a week for Marty's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. the kids nowadays get contracted, they play 620 games, yeah. you know, in the under 20 league. They play, you know, there's no Tri Nations or Four Nations that started this year, uh, a mini championship. So, whatever, they play 15 games a year, and then, you know, you sit on the bench or wait for your gap at either Curry Cup level or, or Stormers, where, I mean, I would rather go play club rugby. I think I played twice a week for the whole first 18 months out of, out of school. You yeah. know, it was yeah. incredible. That's where you learn, that's where you understand. What works, what doesn't work. Now I'm playing against a big starter. You, you went straight to open, Skala? Straight from school oh, to open, yeah. not, not junior rugby? Open rugby, yeah. straight. But do you think maybe, Skala, it, it, it's... Obviously there's the camp and the academies and the, the guys aren't playing enough club now. <coughs> yeah. Def definitely, yeah. Not, definitely not. And I think, you know, then you talk about the size. So these are... And that's why I think there's, there is still a bit of a gap. So you have schoolboy rugby playing a lot of rugby and also, yeah. like I said, yeah. high, high performance mm. environments. Then there's a bit of a gap from the age of 18 to 21, 22 kind of thing before you move into a senior team, senior setup where it is, um, you know, all, uh, very, very professional and you're playing a lot, of, a, a lot of rugby. And there's a gap in terms of the amount of games you play. Yeah. So let's say you play 10 games a year. What do you do for the other 42 weeks of the year? You gym. Yeah. Yeah. You gym and you train. Yeah. So you get bigger. Yeah. Um, you know, so there, there needs to be an element of, of more games also, like and you, competitions. You get to, when you're in that environment, and I thought, like, I would rather not train and play. Like, if they had an option of playing a game or yeah. training, I would always 
pick to play. That's what yeah. you love. But a lot of these youngsters at the end of my career, I caught them, were better trainers than they were rugby players. <laughs> you know, if they have the option to go play A-League for their club or go play in, in the UK, at, at some, you know, the old Albanians or go play at Bedford, but Saracens gave them an option to go train, they, they would rather They'd train rather than play. They'd rather gym than play rugby. Mm. I mean, I want to go play the game, give it everything, drink a few beers, and actually woke up on a Sunday body saw I flew, cheers, flew, cheers, cheers. flew around the park there and I actually got something to show for my efforts. Cheers, you know, cheers, cheers. May the best team win, eh? Yeah, Paul Boyce. Hey, okay, cool. Show me cheers and Ronnie Bosch. Cheers. Yeah. 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 Hey, I beat Paul Jim, don't worry. Don't worry, we beat Paul Jim. Tell us about that. 3-0 yeah. yeah. in the rain. Paul Jim under 21. Yeah. <laughs> we we had the 3-0 in the rain. Yeah, yeah. on this little on this Wait, turf behind us. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was right. Louis Kuhn. Louis Kuhn was the big superstar then. I was, I think was he playing? Yeah. What That's why was I said Paul Jim under 21s. <laughs> Where are we now? 90? What, what 95. 95. Oh, man, he oh. wasn't at school still then? Was he? No. He did a he post just make somewhere. <laughs> okay, whatever. He was a big <laughs> yeah, shot then. Yeah, Donnie Hamlet. Was, was one of the yeah. youngest guys on the team. <laughs> he did do a post matric, Louis, though. But yeah, not exactly. That's why. I think no. 92, 3, maybe 4. When was I can tell you exactly the team of 95. Were you watching in the stands? Were you clapping when I ran on? I was grade 8. Is it? Yeah. Do you, me you remember the game? In we the went round? 96. We got a penalty in the first five minutes and we defended for the rest <laughs> of the game. <laughs> <laughs> Who was with you in the team? Jockey. Uh, uh, our captain was, was uh, uh, Jockey. Um, Michal. Um, oh, Michal Lopsha. Uh, okay. What position uh, was he? Uh, okay. Unfortunately, passed away. Oh, sure. yeah. oh, shit. Sorry, man. Um, it's okay. Eh? Yeah, he was head boy yeah. as well. Yeah. Lucas slash flank. I think, was he still playing flank then, maybe? Lucas slash I can't remember. Yeah. 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 Remember, you remember great uh, J.P. Besson. Yes. Hooker. Okay. Yeah, he played prop also. Ah, because you were the hooker. No, no, no. I was the prop then. <laughs> <laughs> when, you, when you ran on the field, I'd heard about him. I didn't, I didn't know what this guy looked like. And we played him here. Yeah. And I remember he ran on Scala. This guy was the, he was a tall guy also. Yeah, so he could yeah. play hooker and flank. And he was SA schools two or three years and post matric. Yeah. And I think I was only 16 then, and this guy ran on. And I was, I think I was, I might have been loose head prop. And I was just hoping he turns around, he's loose head also. Yeah. Then I have to scrum against him. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and I was like, geez, this guy is messy. Yeah. And tight head then. Yeah, then he was, yeah, he, I think I might have played loose head or tight. I can't remember, but luckily he was the other side of the scrum. Uh, you, the brought, big you brought out your inner ox, yeah? ox and chair. I used to break them. You couldn't scrum. Here's another clip. We're <laughs> talking about big South African boys. How's our man, Ergia? <laughs> I was so confused when this happened because I ran obviously to defend off the line yes. and I look in front of me, there's no Portugal players. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thinking, yeah. where's everyone? Yeah. And I look left and I just see look, this ball. Yeah, what was it? The full chicken and the, fi the four prego <laughs> rolls. <laughs> all for 64 21. Yes. Six, yeah. But the Portuguese guys didn't hold back though when it came to scuffles. Eh? Yeah, I, was, I, think that was, I think that was the only fight they think they were going to win. I yeah. think. Or they tried to intimidate, they all tried, I don't know. They picked literally the worst oak. Yeah, the they, they choose. Okay, probably choose the biggest guy, but also there's a reason he's the biggest guy. Yeah. And um, but throughout the game, there was no other niggly stuff. They only, I think, they only target Archeo. They don't target any of the rest of us. Yeah. yeah. And the occasion that the crowd must have been fantastic, though. Yeah, Bloom is always crazy. Yeah. And you like, yeah, because you think like it wasn't, it wasn't your traditional box side that was playing so yeah. you think people won't be as hyped for it they're even more hyped yeah. and all the Portuguese people <coughs> there's a big Portuguese community in, in Bloom and they were <laughs> busy like I had pre dinner with the previous night with my uh, parents my girlfriend and then they were f they had this whole section booked up in the restaurant they're all Portuguese your parents yeah go <laughs> 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 no, 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 no. <laughs> opposite side of the spectrum <laughs> and um, they were busy in the bathrooms Oaks were going there and they were like throwing up to, s to drink more and like they yeah, were busy and it's a fire. restaurant it's not even like Staffies or something yeah. in Bloom it's like this nice steakhouse so they're really living for, for it and they loved it on the on the day yeah. it was a big occasion I, I must say even because um, obviously I wasn't there but watching it on TV and, and then suddenly they pan pan out mm. and you see you know, even the you know unreal. in the yeah, everywhere in the stand, it's just yeah. packed. There's yeah. no open Los blocks Lobos. or anything like that. I remember, yeah. Shimmy, uh, we had a, a very successful night before Osterun took us out Jesus. to the darkest places Staffies. to Staffies. Staffies. Yes. Uh, so I started shaking uh, and, when you mentioned that. And we won, the <laughs> we won the test. We, were play we played Wales. Eh? It was at, it was yeah. at the same test match. And we also exactly packed, packed Bloemfontein Stadium. Mm. And we made so many changes. Remember, we made we lost the test. No, in he the played, you played the game. 
the, the one that Lumpunta and Yao was my debut. Yeah, my debut game, yeah. And the atmosphere was the night before the atmosphere. We know all about it. We were in a steakhouse which we were absolutely flying. Again, like a reunion. So many of our so many. former teammates. Juan Rotenbach, Jesus. Juan, I haven't yeah. seen him. Yeah. Juan Smith. Juan, Juan Smith. Juan. CJ van der Linde pulled yeah. in. Yeah. Yes, sir. Juan Pinar, Franz Stein. Director of rugby. Director yeah. of rugby. <laughs> If someone told me Franz Stein is going to be a DOR, I would have um, not believed him, eh? <laughs> from, from when I knew him as playing rugby with him. He's a, he's a lovely Cup. loose unit. <laughs> and uh, now he's director of rugby. I'm actually seeing him next week, uh, uh, Franz. We've got a bit of a catch up in the crew. Oh, um, nice one. But anyway, then Osteran took us to Steffi's, and that was the end of our weekend's productivity. <laughs> yeah, when you said dinner, I thought it was just dinner. Uh -uh. Yeah. So you yeah, pushed dinner a bit and then. When Austin, let's go Never to Never do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <look. laughs> I pushed in a bit and then Staffies was, it was interesting. Look, it was a long day the next day. Yeah. It was a long day. I was happy to leave Bloom, I won't lie. <laughs> you I can't get out of Bloom though. Eh? Yeah. yeah. It's hard to get out of there. They keep you there. When you go to Bloom, you, they make sure you stay for a long time. And like, I think the earliest, we can, get, on a Sunday, yeah, right? the earliest we can get back to Cape Town is five o'clock. You don't want to miss that flight either. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. Guys, what, one area we are blessed with in South Africa is locks. You know, you look at, I mean, I think we were talking about Lurch earlier on, Eben, yeah. Samans in the mix now, Franco, Erchia, Erchia um, John Klein. Mm. John Klein. Klein. Uh, Ruan Nokia. Yeah. I think Kubis Visa's back now from Sale. Mm. Uh, uh, at the Sharks now from Leinster. Jason Jenkins. Jason Jenkins. Jason Jenkins. JD Schickling is just Justin. Back. back with us JD now. Schickling, yeah. Jason. From Paul Jim. <laughs> but we, we seem to produce a lot of lock enforcers. Is there a reason behind I mean, it's, it's abnormal. You think about it now, we've yeah. mentioned close to 10 players. Mm -hmm. And each of them could probably play, in, probably make most international teams, yeah. respectfully speaking, yeah. yeah. I don't know. Ask the forwards. Like I, I, think, <laughs> yes. I think it's like our national build of South Africa. Mm, I think yeah. you walk around the streets, you see a lot of locks, a lot of loose Four forwards, especially in the Afrikaans community. Mm. Yeah. We mention a lot of them, but a lot of them is injured at the moment, which is the issue with our balance within our squad. Yeah. You know, like you, you know, losing so <coughs> your Franco Mask. I can't remember when last he was injured. I think it's yeah. the first big injury he's ever had. Yeah. 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 Is it? Yeah. And and also the versatility of those eggs, because if you think Peter Steff started off as a as, as a, a lock, lock. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, but but the fact that he has just such Peter an engine, Steph, yeah, you forget all, about you know, it. He can he can cover locks. So the makeup yeah. of our team and where we're going now with the six two and even the seven one split, having having that versatility puts you in a position to be able to do that. So you have a Peter Steff, you have a um, a Franco Mostard, you have. Uh, you know, even I think BJ Dixon yeah. now Avengers being able to, yeah. to to cover that. Um, uh, Ruan Fenter, same mm. thing. Um, you know, uh, um, Ruan Orkia, apparently, you know, next year he might be playing on the on, on the, the side of the yeah. scrum for for the Bulls really? a little bit as well. Okay. So again, he's got uh, again he's got yeah. the workload that can that Did can look do at that. Yeah. Um, so it helps. But still, I mean, you mentioned Emil van Heer and you forget about yeah, Corne, is it Corne Roll. Corne Roll, the at four the, lock, at yeah. the Sharks. All two um, meters tall. It's all like two meters, big guys. Yeah. So there, there's a Ruben good stock of... Ruben van Heer then? Oh, yeah. Ruben van Heer then? We've always How had them. How can you forget though, your Stormers, mate? We've <laughs> always had them. You think of 95, eighth man World Cup final, Mark Andrews. Yeah. yeah. You Donny know, Rousseau. skill set. Our era, Donny Rousseau. Donny Rousseau was the ultimate super sub for us, whether yeah. it was flank or number eight, like he did in 07, or Victor four lock, Bucky's. like he did Victor Bucky's. But one thing I guarantee to you now is that Donny Rousseau will not be playing eighth man. <laughs> now. <laughs> no, 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 no. He's <laughs> not packing at eight, guys. <laughs> what a legend. Yeah. I love even, even you like your gym sessions. You compare to Eben in terms of gym. Who's, who's the stronger one? No, I don't, yeah, I'm going to go with Eben. Just uh, <laughs> what you do, but Eben's quite a big guy. Is but I, I try to compete in the gym. Yeah. Um, try my best. Is it? Yeah, I'm quite. I'm quite. Let's, let's talk Jimmy. about your gym. Let's you know. You, you're what putting you your head down. Yeah. Uh, Shemi, have you? What, uh, what's your one? You try, have you? Have you tried to go with um, Evan in the gym? He jog, uh, when I get there, he jogs on the treadmill for five minutes, and I see him walk into the coach's office. So he's he he tired. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. He's a lightweight. <laughs> hey, hold on. Hey, no, no, no. I'm this not bad. I'm not bad on the weights. I'm not bad on the weights. I just don't need them at the moment. I need them. Yes, I never see at the weights. <laughs> Cardio is more important for me. I see no, Darby and Norman more. Yeah. Yeah. I would agree with that. Yeah? I agree. I don't, I don't need the weights. I don't need, I, need a, I don't need a bulk up. Where's that clip? Which one? Lightweight? <laughs> this is for Mandela. <laughs> no, but I, I enjoy it, yeah. And I jump on my own, yeah. Like, uh, 
don't, I don't have a gym partner. It's like, because I like to do my thing, get in, get out. Because not uh, like most rugby players aren't very fond of gym. Yeah. I've just been fond of gym, regardless if it was rugby or not. I would have yeah. enjoyed gym and I enjoy the, just gym being for active. the beach. Yeah, you got to look good on. Yeah. Um, hey, John also on gyms a lot. For Club Beach. He's, he's, yeah. he's, you, you love a little arm curl. Yeah, you no, know, no. You know, yeah, you do. I'm you a gym with Jim. I see him in Paul Jim a lot. I, I, I Paul Jim, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Paul's version <laughs> active. Um, the, no, How many that's, sessions that's a week? That's my training. That's my training. How many sessions a week? No, if I can do five, then I try to do five. But five. I probably average three. Do you have He's a personal trainer? I do. Apparently, once we must 50 get minutes, this. 50 minutes a day. We must get this done. He's quicker on his arms than he's on his legs. Yeah, <laughs> probably. <laughs> There's no knees left here. Not because of big arms, <laughs> just because of terrible knees. Chaps, um, rugby championship coming up. Uh, obviously, Evan, we'll, we'll talk to you about you, you, obviously your involvement and, mm. you know, obviously not you, not you here, but you, you guys, what, what do you guys pick up with the squad? Any, any, anything glaring with it or? <coughs> obviously, there's a couple of injuries. Yeah, for, for, I mean, obviously, the first time we haven't seen a squad with Faf in for ages. Mm -hmm. um, so at number nine, Kubus Reinach. Um, Granty, obviously oh, on the bench, and then Mono, um, Krappies van der Berg. Um, and then I think the balance of the 6-2 split, is it still, you know, is, is it still something we're going to chase? You know, you look at the Irish game, uh, I think Salman Murak got a couple of minutes yeah. in that one. Yeah. They didn't use him at all. They didn't empty they the Portugal, bench. And the yeah. whole premises of the 6-2 bench is that you've got the best two packs of forwards. You've got to use them early. So, yeah. you know, obviously with having like the locks we uh, aforementioned, like being injured, um, I think that puts a lot of pressure within our squad, but also gives opportunity for development, like obviously being Jason Dixon, a guy like Ruan Fenton, yeah. and how they're going to be utilised. There's always going to be this transition post World Cups or in between World Cups, and I think you know slowly but surely we'll see that. I can't see much changing in the back line. Obviously, the main question is like who's your first pick at ten, and at the moment it's still Andre. Yeah. But you know you see a guy like Sasha who wants to play Flaff, he's filling the utility role. Once a guy like Damien Willems comes back, Kane and Moody, you know, will we then go to a five three split? Because I think, you know, then the balance of power shifts to the backs more than the forwards. Sean, sorry, just um talking about the scholar, you, you tapped on it. Sorry, Shami. Okay, I won't apologize. Yeah, sorry, you're wearing your Paul gym top, I won't apologize. <laughs> um the, the utility role. When you started off with the spring box, it was wing yeah. and obviously your natural position <coughs> was inside centre. Did you speak to Jake at all saying, listen, when do I get a shift there or are you just happy to run out and wear the green jersey? No, I mean... Jacques Fury was also wing, wasn't he? Uh, yeah. yeah. No, well, yeah. He, he, yeah. yeah. He started he was, in yeah. the 03. Yeah, 03, 03 wing, yeah. wing, centre wing. He, yeah. he did a bit of both. Also came I off the that. bench a lot. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, but, but I think when, you, when you're when that age, you, you just want to get exposure and you want to play for the box. Yeah. And, and I think probably 99% of the guys, um, that would be the attitude where... Give me an opportunity and, and I'll take it. But then you come to a stage where you realise, okay, I've had a taste of it now. Where's my best chance to be able to yeah. um, to get a long shot at this and, and where I can be my best and compete? And then you need to make that call because one of two things happen. Either you, you just become a, a versatile player and, and that can play everywhere, but you don't really... Um, and, and, I mean, you mentioned France... France, in a way, was that because he, yeah. he never solidified himself as either 10 or 12 or, or 15. 15. And he was really good wherever he always played, but yeah. you know, didn't put his head down and say, I want to play. One, yeah. Brent, same yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, you know, but the difficult thing with that sometimes is guys make that decision and then they're not first choice. And then they're like, okay, no, but I will, yeah. I will play on the wing again. Mm -hmm. yeah. So then you need to stick to it and, and, and kind of you know, make sure that you, be, you become the best at it. But when you're young, um, you know, you, you just want to play. And, and uh, it's a difficult call to make eventually, I think, for a lot of guys. Um, I was lucky maybe in a way it, it worked out. And I, I never went to Jake and said, hey, I want a shot at 12. Yeah. I got the opportunity. First time I played at 12 was against Uruguay. We won that game quite comfortably. And then the first Tonda game... Tonda Reich, Vanga, yeah. Scott, Tonda, Scott, 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 six. <laughs> And then I, I sat in the, was six or seven I sat in the stands, I watched six. you, so you yeah. scored yeah. six, mm. Tondi. Yeah, um, and then the following week we played Tri-Nation style, we played Australia. At Jog, Park. Yeah, Jacques yeah. Free and I played that together the change, for the yeah. first mm. time and we just clicked, so yeah. lucky in that sense. I think the game's changed a bit, like um, when we were playing for the bulk of, maybe by the end of career it changed a bit, like your starters played deep. Mm. Like we played 65, yeah. 70, 75, 80 minutes, mm. probably predominantly 80 minutes for the two of us. Um, now it's 23 men game. 
and yeah. you need that versatility on the bench. And like if you if you think of a guy like Kwaha, I love Kwaha Smith, but Kwaha for me, his <coughs> most value comes off the bench. Yep. His impact is vast and he's, he's just done it so many times that he can fit into whatever is required, whether it's absolute work rate, tackling, adapt to the game, or is it changing the game by actually carrying and getting involved? You know, for me, his impact is way bigger coming off the bench it's than enough. it's coming. And in our days, like we had like a few super subs, guys who came and changed the the, the look of the game, the feel of the game, and the trend of it, but predominantly it was starters. Now it's changed. But, but what was the original super sub? Skin step. Skin, yeah. You could change the game. He was the. If you, if, I always think mm. about. And probably him. if you think about his yeah. his career, you know, it, it you know that that was where he was at his best. Yeah, so he's on the box. Yeah. But I, I just wanted to mention when, and even on Bob with loose forwards, when you when you speak about the 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 squad selected now for the box. I was quite surprised with Jan Hendrik Vessels yeah. Yeah. being there, and it, it probably brings us back to that versatility. He Prop might hooker. be able yeah. to, you yeah. know. So you do not take an additional hooker. You have a guy that can play prop, cover prop, but also so you know cover covers hooker. your yeah. your fourth hooker kind of thing with Malcolm maybe still recovering in a way. Um, and then and that's a guy that we haven't mentioned um, is Elric Lowe. Yeah. Also kind of covering the seven slash four. You know, he, he could cover a, a lock position as well. He played uh, on a junior box. He junior box lock. lock. Oh, really? Yeah, okay, yeah. I had no yeah. idea. Yeah. Our um, junior box um, lock was Joan Smith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then... Wouldn't go fill in. With but, and and, 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 and Vin Pum van Rooyen. Van Rooyen. <laughs> yeah. But then I am I am surprised, and, and, and again, not, not because he's here, Evan, that there's no... So it's only Kwaha that's it's an out-and-out eight. Out eight. Yeah. You know, and, and that's probably Elrich now yeah. covers, covers that as well. So... Those would be the, the, the only questions I have. But again, I mean, who, who are think, we? Do you think we, if, if, if the week works out that way, like we can go back to a 5-3 split? Possibly. I think it's a bit, I think you mitigate more risk by going 5-3 now. And like, like, say for example, if you pick up injuries and, you know, like we don't have everyone, like Lewis not there, Franco's not there, John Klein's not there, you know, you're not going to pick... You know, you're 23, but give one guy two minutes off the bench. So then, yeah, then you probably have to consider a 5-3 five, five, split. Like we as the Stormers, we love doing that. Yeah. We pick the 6-2 split regardless. And then you don't play. And then you don't, play. Yeah. You, you don't empty sense. your bench at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no? And you get an injury. So but you <laughs> coach there. Eh? Like, I mean, I, yeah. Yeah, you, Look, you, we, Evan, we've got to talk <laughs> to Evan here. What, are you on standby now? What, what happens now? Obviously, you know, you would have liked to be on the, on the plane mm. to Australia. Was there chat to you, communication? What what, what happens now? Um, yeah, I've just uh, got an, uh, what do you call it? Just a gym program, mm -hmm. I think, to stay fit. So And then you and you just leave the WhatsApp group, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's quite cut to right? yeah. I was. It happened there in the gym when I saw you Monday. Yeah. Me and my dad were having a sit and then I just saw a remove from group. But it's, it's always been like that. It's nothing new. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, so I'll... Be on standby, sort out a few things, um, have to see doctors and all that, and then we'll see where it goes. If I can play this year still, maybe fix up a few things, let's see. Because yeah, you also, you don't play at your best. I don't know how uh, you guys yeah. probably feel the same. If you know you have a niggle or something, that's not and, like a... And what is the niggle at the moment, do you have it? Uh, it's a little shoulder of mine. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, because it started with Stormers, and um, it just, yeah, obviously playing 80 week in, week out, doesn't get time to... Yeah. rest and it just doesn't stop and I'd rather fix it up and be 100% myself than play with a niggle then I yeah. can't uh, yeah. unfortunately as we get older you, you start playing more, with of more and more of those get used to it what, what was it? you played open side obviously for the Stormers you've covered seven you've covered all three yeah what, I've played what, all three what's your what, where are you most comfortable or eight and I've actually been enjoying six these last yeah. few games I really enjoyed it, it um, it's not much of a difference in terms of roles at the Stormers, but I just really enjoyed um, kind of having that license just to play yeah. at six. I really enjoy that. Gents, Australia unbeaten under Joe Schmidt, double Wales and I think Georgia. How tough is it going to be there? I think Suncorp is the big one. You know, yes. obviously Suncorp, they've got mm. a very good yeah, we, there. It's so hard like, to, in history to go against a team's form at a venue. We see it year in, year yeah. out. You know, if you've got a good vibe at a certain stadium, that, that trend carries on. Mm. Like, mm. But if you battle at a, at a venue like we've done in Brisbane, so I think for Australia, that first test match is their big one because I can't see us, if we don't play a great set in that first game or we lose that game against Brisbane, them getting a result in 
in Perth. And look, I, I mean, I can't see the box losing, but our history shows us that we've gone across to Brisbane with exceptional sides and actually just delivered some of our poorest performances. Yeah. yeah. The, um, and I, I see we got a bit of abuse for, for a previous show where we said, you know, not many, <coughs> not many of the Australian players um, would come into contention for, you know, when we select the world team. Where did the abuse come from? I oh, just comments. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. And it hurts. It hurts. You see how I'm struggling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um but I think I I really want Australian rugby to be strong. Yeah. And yeah. and you know, we're not gonna shy away from the fact that they are under massive pressure, rugby union, in Australia to succeed because of the other sporting codes. Mm. But the reality is that they that the, 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 the results over the last two years or so, it's been poor. Yeah. So we as South Africa really have everything to lose going there because we are expected to win. Yeah. If, if we don't, then it's like, uh, you know, what's going on now? It's not the greatest Australia team, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. But in terms of, you know, looking at the bigger picture of where Australia is at and the, the World Cup being in Australia 2027, we want Australia to get better. Yeah. But we want that to happen only after we've we play the Lions. Yeah. <laughs> But they've also got the, the Lions. Yeah. That's a massive Next one, that, yeah. in terms of yeah. commercially. I, also. Think I, Australian rugby. I don't think I've ever said this or wished it, but I want Australia to be stronger. Because yeah. like, yeah. we were, we played against the, course, I guess, yeah. so golden, golden generation, generation yeah. early 2000s. They just won the World Cup in 1999, and the next generation of players was just as good. They obviously didn't have the success at World Cups, mm -hmm. but they were phenomenal. But that's why I say, Scala, like, Joe Schmidt, I think, is the man to improve. Australian rugby, yeah. but will he get them back on track to where they were in those golden years? I don't think so because it's not it him. The it's the, the structure. It's yeah. the it's the whole organisation yeah. that I feel is not yeah. functioning in the way that you know they you hoi away the force and you get the rebels back in, mm. and then you play there and then you bring the force back and now the rebels is gone again. You go back yeah. to the force. So and, and the issue they've got is their two original strongholds, yeah. in Sydney and Brisbane, yeah. is not as strong as they used to be, you know. And now the Brumbies is their strongest franchise. What, the, yeah. Their money comes from the West, the Western Force, so it's, I think it's quite hard to manage. Yeah. In the box setup, obviously you, you've been there a while now. Uh, Tony Brown's influence there. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a, it's like an attack, and the way he explains it, um, and it's a, yeah, it's a different kind of mindset he brings in. It's obviously New Zealander. Yeah. So a different way of thinking and attack that we usually, as South Africans, are used to. I enjoy it a lot. Yeah. I enjoy the attack aspect of rugby. So loose forwards have got a big role to play there. Yeah, especially and um, especially yeah, it depends on what type of loose forward you are. Um, um, you, you're a bit more of a tighty if you work in the middle of the field, but if yeah. you work on the edges, that's quite fun. Yeah. Um, but just the w thinking and the the way he encourages you to be brave on attack and yeah. try things. Um, I really enjoy those few weeks I was there now, yeah. learning from him. And Coach Drain? <laughs> coach, uh, coach Dwayne. <laughs> Pepsi <laughs> walks in and calls him coach and I start laughing. <laughs> I, I can't, I, that feels weird. But yeah, no, he sits in the evenings because he comes up with all these crazy blasts and tackle jaws and I tell him, listen, just because you can't, you don't have to do this anymore now. You think of all these things to bug us up with. And he says, yes, and he loves it. So, um, we, did, we, uh, no, we did, uh, I mean, I can just see it in Dwayne. Cause like, but like we did the same with Austin Rudd. Like we, he hated live scrums, live mauling. It was the end of him by the mm. his, end of his career. And then he transitioned straight into a coach. Absolutely. And we got there and like obviously he comes to me, he says, Scala, please don't say anything, but we're doing live mauling, live scrumming, live breakdown straight <laughs> off the back of it. He said, oh, so the stuff you hate that he's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Stormers as well, he's part of the, you and Rito no, have no, 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 no bars hold on a Tuesday. Box office, guys, it's not Stormers show. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's not Africa, right? It's, it's good for you. But he's enjoying it. It's a, I mean, nice environment, stimulating. Yeah, no, it's always awesome being part of the box setup. And, and the level of detail. I mean, that's one thing. The Springboks are, are probably ahead of streets ahead of, of any other team. Yeah, and you know, you've seen on Chasing the Sun when they sit with the PlayStation remotes and guys run their lines and moves and stuff. So attention to details um, is massive. Um, and I think that's yeah where you can get better in those one percent. I think that's where the detail comes in. But also, um, and the lucky thing is, if you know your detail and all that, then you can bring, then you can go and be physical and enjoy it because you don't, you're not wondering on the field where should I be, yeah. what should I do. If you have that all covered and you, Evan, yeah, so you started Paul, Paul, um, boys, yeah. Sharks, and then to the Stormers, and, and in a couple of what, first season player, I think you are young player of the year, isn't it? 
for ERC Player of the Year. Right. How many Man of the Matches did you collect? Yo. And selected for the Springboks. Yeah. Good move, bad move. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> it worked out okay. Not, not, not one of my bad decisions I've made before. Um, but yeah. Uh, I, I really enjoyed the Sharks, especially my first year, because, um, as you said earlier, we played a lot of um, age group rugby. We had two rounds of under-21 Curry Cup. And um, playing there when I was 19, it was like getting used to playing against older guys. And I had got two shots at Curry Cup in that year with Sean Everett against the Cheetahs and Sharks. And I saw him, but Juan Pinar walked in and he asked uh, Luazi, where's a guy who's whose uh, ID starts as triple zero. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's my name. <laughs> He's like, I'm, I have to, I'm gonna retire. And he only retired, what, last year or yeah. this year? Um, so that was fun. And then um, part of the Super Rugby training squad and then COVID hit 2020. Yeah. And then after that, it was just kind of not getting chance to play. Under 21s, we had like three games. Yeah. And um, most of the guys uh, lost contracts. Yeah. Uh, 21, so Oaks weren't motivated to play. And then you got four or five of us who actually were staying on and tried to prove something and the other guys just didn't feel it. So they didn't care about what happened. So they didn't play to their best. And then you get pushed into this, we were called the, the pre-season group or the fitness group. We were like five guys yeah. stuck there. It was like me, uh, Mtsunu, Takir Abrams, mm. Murray Costa. Um, Good players. Yeah, yeah. Lapis Lapis Kachni. Yeah. They put him in the fridge. They literally called him, put him in the fridge because he lost way too easily. So he doesn't do any cardio, he just eats and jumps. Yeah. So that was quite fun. But then obviously you get kind of sick of that. And um, outside of Durban, I studied online. So there wasn't like a campus, like a Marty's yeah. or Ike's where you can go and meet people and get out. Um, <coughs> you study alone at home online. So you, I didn't meet people outside of rugby, which was quite tough for me because I love rugby and it's awesome, but like it's not. It's not my everything. Like, yeah. There has to be a balance. And I started missing my family and I was thinking, is it worth it to like kind of sacrifice all this and miss my little brother who's now 12 years old, yeah. missed his first two years in primary school because I'm not, um, I don't regret it, but like I was starting to think, listen, some things are in more important. Family is very important. And my first initial thought was just to uh, go study at Marty's, yeah. not even, and then maybe try to play varsity cup and then see where it goes from there. And then um, luckily we could sort out something at, at, at a province at the Stormers. But I, like, I, I thought I was just going to be, I was happy being a, a training squad member because Sia was still there, Yaku was, Yaku Kutsia was still there, uh, Troki was there, John Augustus. So I knew there was a pecking order, so I don't know if I'm going to play. And then um, I went, went to meet Dobbo at Casas of Ursa, me and my dad. And <laughs> as soon as he sat, he felt, over because the pillow on the cushion was loose. So at the first time I met Dobby, he sat over me, <laughs> fell off the chair, and then we had a beer and it was, the ice was quite broken then. And then um, they offered me a, a, a loan, and it, the loan was something like, if I don't get a contract within the first month or month, month and a half, and then I finish the first initial Curry Cup season with the Stormers and I have to go back to, to the Sharks. Uh, but if I'm pressed enough, then I, I can get a solid contract and I stay, and there's no strings attached with the Sharks and buyout clauses and all that. And then I was ball boy the first game ever for the Stormers against Cheetahs at, at Greenpoint Stadium. Yeah. I was never throwing a ball to France. Yeah, yeah. And he looks at me, he's like, yeah, I was just, yeah, my own just cock. <laughs> <laughs> and I just threw on the ball, I was like, yeah. I don't know what to say to you. And then my first game was against the Quaster in Kimberley. Lost. Like, I don't think the Stormers or Promise have won in a long time against the Creek was in Kimberley. And then played against the Bulls off the bench, against the Lions. And then obviously I was in between Sia, went to the Sharks, Yaku with Sia, Mustin Riabni went to Bath, oh. and Throcky went to Saints. Hampton, yeah. So Same. things just miraculously yeah. worked out. And then I still remember we had a, a social at Thursday Scarecrow, and it was like coming near the end of the first month. And I don't know if I'm staying or going, or just staying for nine months. And then uh, my dad called me, he's like, listen, we got the contract, you, you stay in Cape Town. I was like, well, now I have to enjoy the social <laughs> with Dobbo <laughs> and them, and all in uh, Kitsi and everyone. And then, yeah, I was just picked up from there. So, yeah, a lot of chance, a lot of luck. And I think, yeah, just hoping for the best worked out at the end. And then, yeah, just being a dobber and them and uh, you and all the rest of the coaching staff, the Stormers have been so supportive of how I play. And, um, yeah, it's just like this freedom just to go enjoy rugby, yeah. which, which I really um, enjoy a lot. And then I, six I, months later, Bok debut. Yeah. yeah, and Bloom. Yeah. Of all places, the scary place, Bloom. I've been to Bloom three times with 
under 21 Grey Cup might debut and Portugal test and afterwards it's Bloom 3 and Ivan 0. Like I've never <laughs> felt good. <laughs> I think that's for all of us. Yeah. I've got a question. When Adabo fell over backwards <laughs> off the chair, did you have to phone all the King's horse and all the King's men to put <laughs> Humpty Dumpty together again? <laughs> or not? <laughs> oh, word. Oh, I hope he sees this. I'm going to clip in the same yeah. <laughs> Just send it to him. And, uh, and the helium thing you did with him was I've already screen recorded that. It's my, when I <laughs> have a beer with some of my really mates, funny. I just, just want to get funny. I'll just throw him that. That's the best thing ever. Yeah. And then you've signed a, uh, an extension now with the Stormers. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the thing is, I'm still young. I don't, I don't want to... I've been overseas before. Um, it's nice, but it's not always... Grass isn't always as green as people say it is overseas. I will probably eventually go somewhere. Um, but now, being 24, living in Cape Town, playing... And the Stormers are you, in You're in the city, you're in town. Eh? Yeah, I moved from Stellenbosch to, to like Greenpoint. No. Away from Paul. It is, it is. Um, it's not a quick drive anymore. But it's uh, traffic. Well, John told me I had to leave this morning at four. <laughs> town, so I must say I'm enjoying my sleep. But it's yeah. John's daily commute, that boy. Yes, yes I, I don't know how he does it. Probably, I'll probably end up there one day with family and kids in, in Paul or Stellenbosch. But for now, I'm happy in Greenpoint. Former Paul boys or Springbok captain, Corner Cricker, said you, you should play six and, and take over Sia one day. Did you pay him to say that? No, I was just <laughs> <laughs> my, my reach is far and poor, but I'm that far. <laughs> and, and working under CS captain, obviously you guys in the same loose forward, you involved that. What's that been like? Yeah, so he's, CS has been always so cool. Like the first time I've ever actually, um, I met CS when he gave me my jersey at SA Schools. And I remember I was on my way to play the Leopards on a 21 uh, for the Sharks. And I just get this message from a number, I don't know. And it's <laughs> CR and CR Bello have a selfie to say, hey, we hunting, how are you doing? Yeah. And I thought to myself, why, who's this? Yeah. And then I thought, no, I'm good. And he's like, yo, do you want some fellies? And then these farm fellies came out. I was like, yeah, sure. And never thought he'd actually come to it. And then literally a week later in the mail, the fellies popped through. So yeah, just starting there, like, she has always been so helpful, always been um, very yeah, th uh, kind. And like with uh, my girlfriend joined the first time now with uh, the uh, in the whole box set up, mix up and him and Rachel were very like um, welcoming to her and like helping her fit in and always so nice with my family is there, speaks to my little brother. So yeah, it's always been um, good. Never a that, that's before. a whole that's a whole show on its own, eh? Yeah. The, the wags um, sweet yeah. at games. <laughs> you mentioned your girlfriend a couple of times, are you in love or what? <laughs> yeah. yeah <that's> just, <laughs> There's people who <laughs> ask me. Why like, you, you mentioned, you mentioned, yeah. you mentioned, you mentioned your girlfriend a couple of times. Only twice, so it's not that no, bad. Is it twice? Yeah, yeah twice. No, I counted four. How many times did she say you must mention? She didn't actually, no. She just asked me, because previously when I was still single... So why are you blushing? Why, yeah, why, why, why are you tapping your foot on the ground? something new for me. That's that's are you nervous? What's going on? No, like, three years you past blushing? I've always been... <laughs> 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 They've always asked me, when is everyone getting a girlfriend, this, that, that. And now that I have one, now she's like, why aren't people asking you anymore on podcasts? Why? Because like, yeah. they can obviously see I have one. Yeah. No, but they must still ask. I'm like, oh, listen. But no... Um, you mentioned it enough. I've no, yeah. I've She's done it. Cool. <laughs> in case you're wondering, Yevon's got a girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. and he's in love. Yeah, yeah. Yep. box tick. Okay, cool. How's it, guys? We've got a new edition, the box office replay. We're going to look at the good, the bad, and the ugly of Fafty Clerk this week. Here we go, boys. Let's get this right now. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> But where's the good? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, we'll see it. We'll see it. Fifty clerk in your face. Okay, let's have a look at this one now. It's bad. This is very bad. Your hair is starting to trend. This is unstoppable. Skala, <laughs> don't be jealous. Boy. No fuck. Looks like the MVP of the grooming routine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Chasey's the hype man. Chasey's the hype man. Okay, okay, I think we've got one more. Uh, we've got one more. Show me with. Okay. Exercise and. Ah. I need this in my life. Please send it to me. It's brilliant. <laughs> 
Especially into and it amino acids. Ah, there we go. Go online. Small. Um, <laughs> yeah, I thought I, I, I now understand. <laughs> I now understand where the shape comes from. What's exactly. Oh. Essential amino acids, mm. no Really smooth and creamy. That's, that, that is that is terrible. Right. <laughs> Sorry, I just want to like. Can't you pay for your own? No. Okay. No. What do you mean? Let's count the John. So you got golf simulator. Yo. I don't have a golf Hirsch. simulator. No, I'm, just, I'm just going through your sponsors. Addy. <laughs> Betway. Betway. Guys. What is I, that? Protein. Can I? In case you, you got know. Can I, <laughs> can I just quickly Brand mention? Brand. Gym influencer. Mm. You got everything. Mayor of Cape Town. Um, Mayo Fuff's hair there. I was in the gym this week and there was a girl and she tied like, um, I don't know what it was, her hair, okay, like onto one of the, one of the, in the, in one yeah. of the squat racks. And then she was like turning like this, turning like this. By her hair. Near legs mom. up. Legs up in like this um, uh, pose. zen pose, hanging, hanging from, her hair. Hair, man. from her hair, like on her hair. Is that normal in Paul? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I was like, what is going on? I was checking for cameras to see if it's like Leon Schist or yeah, something. Hey, hit you. Like, that was crazy. No, man. No, I was like. In Paul? But I know, like that, like that on the, uh, by the hair. I see nothing wrong. You're just going for the read. Yeah? Yeah, going for the, the read. read. Yeah, I've, I've played against uh, Faf a few times. I mean, like, he's got the biggest heart, but he's got, yeah. like, the reverse of body dysmorphia. He thinks he's six foot four <laughs> and weighs 120. He'll be flying out the line. You go, Fuffy, in your box, Papa. Yeah, he, but, like, he, he, he's so brave. Eh? No, his oh. commitment, I mean, He'll in be tackles. He's, he got, he's got a heart that yeah. the size of that. Yeah. yeah. He'll be missed. I mean, some of the hits he makes and just yeah. getting off the line and smashing big oaks, yeah. flip. Yeah. Suppose it's the stuff he does off the ball that a lot of people yeah. don't see. Don't see you sort yeah. of see the, the, the carries and the passing. He's an unreal, he's a unreal oh, competitor. So many times in, in that situation, that guy will actually get the ball, he will smash them. Mm. You know, you, 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 yeah. you cut off the, the opportunities immediately. Exactly, yeah. Okay, this is. Brother, you're starting to trend. The hype man. The field. <laughs> I can't say anything. If I still had hair left, maybe. <laughs> maybe. But you get the fun copy. I can't say anything. Yo. I think he's been played a lot. Well, That's it's a big brand. Yeah. But, but, <laughs> talk me through. Wingman, Chaslin. No, no. <laughs> Ultimate the wingman is beautiful. Though. He's the hype man. Ultimate. I am the hair commentator, Chaslin <laughs> Colby. <laughs> I love how it's he, a big brand, L'Oreal. Like, yeah. I, I love how he's always incorporated the hair flick in his rugby. Eh? Like when yeah. he hits the deck, there's also a little flick. I've tried long hair, it didn't work out. No, yeah. I had long hair, wow. there's none left. Yeah, well, I tried. Ruben tried that as well, just almost did not work out wow. as well. Didn't work. No. Works as scrum off. Not a lot of guys can pull it off. Geez, I had long hair. Yeah. yeah. You think no, about yeah, it. You covered his number on his back, didn't it? Beautiful, beautiful hair. Yeah. That's All right, guys. Evan? Good luck. Um, hopefully we see you back in the box next sooner rather than later. Thank you. All the best with everything else. Thanks for joining us, by the way. Thank it's you been for having me. Welcome to Rondebosch. Or hope you you know you felt the I don't know what I don't know what to call it. The atmosphere. You know, by seventy, that's I just, you. just ask, go ask. Look at the records. Is it? It didn't <laughs> happen my day. <laughs> Scala, enjoy the golf, ma. Uh, Thank Jean. you, my friend. Yeah, and good luck, guys. Enjoy enjoy next weekend. I'll be there on the Tuesday night. Yes, we will. Um, yeah, and enjoy next weekend. It's obviously a big occasion in Parlet. Mm. You guys have been part of that Derby game, so it's a fantastic occasion, I think, for the schoolboys there and every other schoolboy that's playing in Derby games yeah. this year. Perfect. So that's the last words we're going to speak to uh, Evan until yeah. Sunday. I'll see him. Is it? Yeah. Door, uh, line, drawn. line drawn. As you say that, uh, the box office is now closed. Thanks. <laughs>